Welcome back to Access Minnesota. Now more of our interview with University of Minnesota President Bob Brunix. The University Faculty Senate voted recently to cut faculty salaries by 1% approximately uh, for the next year. Hourly university workers will be required to take three days of unpaid furlough during a one-year period. How will this action help address the used budget difficulties? Well, it'll help in a lot of ways. It creates $18, $19 million of financial relief for the university's budget in this next year. It will allow us to uh, fund a fringe benefit increase that gets adjusted every three years. Uh, those are largely, that increase is largely due to health care cost increases. Uh, but it, it will help a great deal. It'll provide a lot of relief in this budget. Um, a, more than 50% of the budget gap that we have to fill is related to the cost of supporting our people. What I'd uh, point out to your listeners, uh, this, is a, this is a period of two years where our employees haven't really received very much in the way of compensation increases and, have, and they've had to absorb additional costs as well. What I feel really good about is I look people in the eye and I ask them to make this sacrifice for the greater good. And the vote, I believe, was 130 to 26. And even the people who voted against the plan were united in their view that it, it was appropriate to ask that we give something back to the university to help balance this budget. There was a difference of opinion as to how we should do it, whether it should be a 1.15 percent assessment across all the different income levels of the university or whether we should have something like the graduated income tax approach to doing it. I thought that was too complicated right now. I thought to, to make that work would have uh, provided very strong incentives for higher paid people to think about looking for other, other jobs. Um, and I thought this was a relatively modest ask to make at a time when we were also trying to give some modest uh, compensation increase and we were doing an extraordinary job in protecting benefits. But what I found to be heartening about this is I, I believe 100 percent of the people who showed up for that debate believed it was the right thing to do. There was some difference of opinion about how to do it. President Brunix, you mentioned the bill that recently passed Congress that had some provisions relating to student financial aid. Uh, specifically, it dealt with Pell Grants and student loan repayments, the caps on student loan repayments. Tell us about how that will help students at the University of Minnesota. I think it's enormously helpful. Actually, I did a press conference with Senator Franken on this particular issue uh, because I strongly s supported this provision in the bill. I know there are differences of opinion out there. But many private lenders have backed off student loans, and uh, and we have we at the University of Minnesota had had not used the private lending system for our students. We were always a school that got direct uh, received direct loans from the federal government, and the reason we stayed with the direct loan program of the federal government is it costs students less. I was asked at one time whether I was interested in going. Uh, into the private sector to get loans and I said well what's the advantage well the university can make some money but I said who pays for the the money the university would make and I was told students and I said absolutely not and so I think students and families really gain uh, by by this this approach and the private sector banks don't really lose that much because they're not they're really not very much invested in student financial aid and student loans uh, some of the bigger federally subsidized uh, banks were, were working in this area. But I think the students are a big winner here and uh, it's a program that we supported and we've been a part of for a long time and it's really worked well for us. President Brunix, you had mentioned earlier in the interview that the University of Minnesota have been able to contain tuition increases to approximately 3% annually for the last several years. Even with that containment to 3%, won't a steadily increasing tuition still put a strain on families of modest means? Well, I think, I think one of our highest values has to be um, the value of maintaining affordability at the University of Minnesota. Now, the question is, how do you do that in an environment where your, your budget is constantly being cut, um, at least the budget from state sources, and in an environment where your costs are continuing to go up? My feeling 
in the future is we need to continue to do what the university has done. We've gone out to our graduates and friends of the university and, and really said to them, don't be the last generation to pull up the ladder behind you. Make sure that you give back. You are given an enormous benefit when you got the GI Bill or you got a national defense education loan as I did. Um, now it's time to give back to this, this generation of students and in some cases working adults who need further education. So to me the way to do this is to increase aid to students who have the highest financial needs, whether they're in medical school or whether they're in undergraduate programs. And uh, we may need to increase tuition three to four percent a year. I think it'll be somewhat higher than that in the next couple of years. But we need to offset that with uh, the continual growth in aid programs and scholarship programs so that the net cost is less. Um, actually this year with federal stimulus money and these scholarships, students uh, of moderate means, you know, let's say a family income of 60000 uh, will actually pay less this year than they, or less, they paid less this year than they did the previous year. So to me that's the, that's the secret. to to really keep growing the resources that keep the cost down for students who have real income needs and, and whose families uh, uh, would find it difficult to send their children here um, if they didn't get any kind of financial help. Many public colleges and universities are relying more heavily on funding from private sector sources. Lecture halls and laboratories at some institutions bear the name of their corporate sponsors. A more controversial trend, though, is the corporate funding of research activities. To what extent is the University of Minnesota taking advantage of this funding, and does this raise concerns about preserving academic integrity? I, I think that's a great question, and it's obviously one of the things you have to balance. Um, we have very st strict protocols at the University of Minnesota with regard to accepting private funding for research. Uh, in the sense that we don't accept restrictions on our ability to publish and our ability to really follow um, the lines of evidence um, that we think are really important. So let's say we get an opportunity to do a research project here at the University of Minnesota and there are some restrictions that the donor wants to make with respect to uh, publishing. So it's a company of one kind or another and they want to hold on to the research evidence um, or they don't want it published if it's not particularly favorable to their product. We don't accept that kind of money and if if there is some possibility that it makes sense to consider um, because of some issue of timing, that issue has to go to me for my approval and I don't approve it unless I have a committee that works with the Vice President for Research and assures me that it does not erode the integrity of the University of Minnesota. I mean, I think it's extremely important that we reach out and build these kinds of research partnerships with the private sector, with the nonprofit sector, obviously with government, but at the same time we are an honest broker. We, we do research and we do investigatory work to really seek the truth. And once you go down the path of really eroding confidence in what you, what you do, um, you really lose your integrity as a great research and, and land grant and educational institution. Let me give you kind of an interesting example. The Cargill Corporation gave us a $10 million gift to do uh, research in, in plant microbial genomics. I mean, it was mostly plant research or laboratory. If you look at that protocol, there's not a single sentence in there that compromises the ability of the university to do its work. Cargill said, we want to support the University of Minnesota. We think you do important work. You decide what you need to do. You make the decisions about what you, you want to publish. And that's just one of many examples that I could, could point to. I think to draw the line and say we're not going to accept private contributions from individuals, or in some cases even from corporations, would be a mistake for the University of Minnesota. But at the same time, I agree with some of the critics that say you need to be very careful about the gifts you get and make sure they don't compromise your integrity or the work that you think is really important to do. I think, I think in this particular case we can weather these, these things and very few uh, private individuals, I don't really know of very many private individuals who want to give to the university and its research who really um, <clears throat> want the university to be restricted in any way. 
I'm thinking about the Schultz Family Foundation gift uh, uh, to uh, prevent and cure diabetes. That whole gift is concerned with preventing and curing diabetes, not promoting a particular product or a particular point of view. And uh, more and more people are stepping up to say, we think you can solve some of the most serious issues in our world. We want to make a, an investment in you because we believe in the people you have here and the work you're trying to do. So for the most part, I think this works really well. But in every single private case, um, we do examine whether there are any kind of restrictions that uh, limit our ability to operate independently as an academic institutions, institution. And they're checked by academics, and they're checked by the Office of the General Counsel and by the University of Minnesota Foundations. University of Minnesota President Bob Runix, thanks for joining us on Access Minnesota. It's a great pleasure to be with you, Joe.